Good evening. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington School Committee on Thursday, March 17th, 2022. I am Bill Hainer, the Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. In the affirmative and present. Mr. Thielman. Here. Uh, Ms. Morgan. Yes, here. Dr. Holman. Here. Dr. McNeil. Here. Mr. Spiegel. Here. Mr. Mason. Here. Ms. Elmer. Here. Mr. Carden. Hey. Uh, AEI Arlington Educational Association representative Jenna Fernandez. Here. And I do not see our high school rep at this time. Uh, tonight's meeting of the Arlington uh, School Committee is being conducted remotely, excuse me, in a hybrid format. Uh, and I'll address that in a moment. With an act signed into law on June 16, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1, 2022, the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020. Executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, the governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, the meeting is being conducted via Zoom and live in the school committee room in a hybrid format and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if they wish to participate, you're asked to provide your full name and in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment. And those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. Um, before we begin, I just want to uh, reiterate, tonight the Arlington School Committee has uh, decided to come back live into the chamber. Uh, we are providing a hybrid format. Uh, a couple of the members uh, will be participating by Zoom, but the rest of the uh, members are here and present. Uh, at this time, I would invite uh, the student rep, Amy Shalaru, to uh, give us any comments and stuff. You're going to need that microphone over here. Amy, if you're going to talk. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I guess the biggest update for this week is that Battle of the Bands is tomorrow night. It's open to the entire town, entire public, so if you guys want tickets, definitely buy those on the Regent website. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have five student bands performing and one teacher band. It's going to be from 7 to 10. It's going to be a blast. Where's this going to be? Regent Theater. Awesome. In Arlington Center, kind of near Starbucks, yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Uh, next we have public comment. For members of the public who wish to address the committee, there will be 30 minutes of public comment, depending on the number of people sign up. <clears throat> Time allotments may be reduced, but will not exceed three minutes each. If the number of people who sign up exceeds what can be done in 30 minutes, the number of speakers will be capped and will be invited to speak based on the timestamp of their email to Ms. Diggins. The school committee respectfully requests participants of the public to utilize their camera, if possible, while speaking and to adhere to the public comment policy, BEDH, that requires participants to provide their name and address. Speakers may offer such objective criticisms of the school operations and programs as concern them, but in public session, the committee will not hear personnel complaints about school personnel nor against any member of the school community except for the school committee or the superintendent in their capacity as the operational leaders of the school pub Arlington Public Schools. Additionally, the committee will not hear anything that might identify or infringe upon a student's privacy by name or incident. If you would like to sign up to speak, please email ediggins at arlington.k12.ma.us by 12 noon on the date of the meeting. Ms. Diggins, we have uh, Two people for public speaking. The first one is Karen Gold. 
Karen? Hi. Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go right ahead. Great. Thank you. So my name is Karen Gold. My address is 18 Hawthorne Avenue. And I have two children in the Arlington public school system. Uh, one is an eighth grader and one is a sixth grader. Um, first, I want to acknowledge uh, that I agree with and I support what I understand to be the goals of the heterogeneous grouping initiative. Uh, among them equity of access to the highest levels of learning for all students, inclusion and exposure to a diversity of voices and experiences, and fostering a growth mindset among uh, both students and teachers. However, I am concerned about the methods used to achieve these goals, how the success of uh, the grouping initiative will be measured, and how frequently progress will be assessed to see if uh, changes to the strategy and tactics are required. And finally, I think there needs to be much greater transparency and specific information provided to the families in the Arlington community. Um, to elaborate on these concerns, um, first, the methods to achieve these goals. Uh, Principal Jenger mentioned in the video and in the report that just came out last night that African-American students are participating in honors classes at less than half the rate of other racial groups. And I agree, this is extremely disturbing. Um, from my perspective, waiting until ninth grade or later to address this disparity seems too late. Does the school board plan to study why this is the case and make interventions at earlier grades so that all students feel prepared and are seen as prepared to work at an honors level? Um, from my perspective, before ninth grade, all public Arlington public school classes are essentially heterogeneous classes. There are no advanced levels, uh, with the exception of the math track. And yet these disparities in access and or perceived readiness for honors level work still exist. So how will the heterogeneous grouping initiative uh, differ from what is ostensibly already being done? Um, second, to be transparent, I'm also concerned with whether Arlington will be able to sufficiently support advanced learners within an, a heterogeneous environment. How will we measure whether the initiative results in everyone achieving at an equal or better level um, as to how they would have performed in separate honors versus curriculum A classes? I'm going to be blunt. In my experiences, our teachers are excellent, but very stretched, and in heterogeneous environments, the curriculum and the priority is not focused on the more advanced learners. I definitely don't want this to be a situation where the honors level students just get more homework. So how will we ensure an engaging and elevated classroom environment for kids that are highly motivated in a given subject? If there's a good percentage of the class that's less inter interested in that subject, and in all fairness, did not even opt to participate at an honors level. Um, do we have any data on what other schools who have undertaken these initiatives have achieved, and I mean actual hard data in terms of things like scores on standardized assessments, participation in AP tests, rates of acceptance to selective colleges, or other ways of measuring mastery of a topic and the maturity of thinking. And do we have a sense of whether additional resources like more teachers or assistants or extensive training are required to make this approach truly successful. And finally, how does Arlington really plan to measure the success of this heterogeneous grouping initiative? Um, what metrics will we use? When will they be shared? And how often will we report on them? Um, I think I'm probably close to my time. So I thank you, you for are. allowing me the opportunity to speak and listen to these concerns. I love Arlington. I've been very happy with our school system generally to date, and particularly the committed and capable educators that my children have had. I do support our mutual goals, and I hope there's an opportunity and willingness to measure, assess, and refine our approaches to best serve all members of the community. Thank you. Uh, Alana Rosenberg, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. My name is Alana Rosenberg, and I live on Kensington Road. Thank you for having me. I have a sophomore at AHS and a seventh grader at Audison. I'm here today to speak about heterogeneous honors classes, too, um, in the high school. I've reviewed the full proposal released yesterday, and though it feels like this has mostly been decided already, I still felt like it was important for me to share some of my family's thoughts and concerns. Our own experience with the difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous classes has been night and day. Our child found the heterogeneous classes last year 
lacked teacher support for the honors material. Um, they were demotivated, questioning why they were taking honors at all. This year has been entirely different. Um, the classes have been more rigorous, more creative, and there has been real support by the teachers because the whole class is moving together. Our child is excited and very engaged. Many parents that we have spoken to have shared similar experiences. I found the evidence presented that last year's heterogeneous classes did not negatively affect honors students very thin based on small numbers and no way to truly compare experiences. Even the survey questions were not well stated, asking students to rate the classes relative to their arbitrary, quote, expectations. Also, we seem to be breaking new ground locally with this pilot. Cambridge and Lexington teach a single curriculum to their heterogeneous ninth grade classes. I also understand that Winchester had a heterogeneous program that they've recently felt the need to revert back to homogeneous. I have not seen that experience addressed in the plan. Given this, I wanted to encourage the school committee to consider how critical it is that if this pilot moves forward, we make a real effort to measure how this change affects those who take honors in heterogeneous versus homogeneous classes. I would love to see survey questions on challenge, teacher support, and classroom experiences. We should be sure to ask those questions of freshmen in ELA this year as a baseline. We can also ask the same questions next year for freshmen who are in a homogeneous honors history as a point of comparison. Removing bias from surveying is notoriously difficult and ideally an expert should be consulted. I'd also ask that we find ways to increase participation in any student surveying, such as making time available in advisory or homeroom and having teachers, advisors and student leaders communicate the importance of this feedback. Having witnessed the difference that can occur when an honors class is taught by a teacher dedicated to a single curriculum, I wanted the school committee to know that we risk losing something with real value when we talk about eliminating homogeneous honors. We should be sure to be extremely rigorous when evaluating the results of this pilot program. Thank you for your time. Thank you. This time that ends public comment. Uh, the next item on the school committee agenda is school committee approval of the budget. Dr. Holman. Thank you. I don't have a lot of comments on this topic um, unless there are questions from the school committee. The budget uh, is the same as the one that we've discussed four weeks ago and had a public hearing on two weeks ago. Um, I think it was four weeks ago. So unless there are any questions um, uh, or unless Mr. Mason has anything to add. I'll go to Mr. Mason first. Nothing to add. Okay. Uh, members of the committee, uh, Mr. Thielman. I was just going to move approval to put the budget on the table for debate or discussion. For the purpose of discussion, is there a second? Of there the is motion? a second. Okay, the uh, motion has been made to approve the budget as presented and it's been seconded. Is there any further discussion from members of the committee? Ms. Morgan. We just, we have to have a really specific motion that Mr. Mason has written for me um, with all the letters right here. Okay. So if we're, do you want to, we got to vote on this motion, right, okay. Mr. Mason? Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Yes. All right. Okay. So are you okay with me reading? Yes. Go right ahead. So Mr. Thielman, can I jump over yours? All right. Yes. So motion to approve the superintendent's FY23 proposed budget by the budget transfer categories for the following amounts. Elementary education, $24,103,484. Secondary education, $24,538,543. Special education, $21,815,543. Curriculum and instruction, $3,570,185. Administration, $2,481,776. Other, $7,938,000. Uh, for a total town appropriation of $84,447,869. Is there a second to that motion? There is. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, I'll roll call vote. Mr. Schlickman? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Exton? Yes. And I vote yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you all. Uh, the next item is uh, monthly financial report, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanner. Just going to give me a second.
presentation mode. I, I'm not sure. Can everybody else see it on Zoom? No, they cannot. Okay. So give us a second. The Zoom people can't see it as yet. We got to call it up on the Zoom too. It's up here. Yeah. It's on the screen. Liz Diggins would have to call it up. Yep, we're doing it now. Miss, Miss X, and this will be all smoothed out when you sit in this spot. Great, <coughs> thank you. <laughs> so, in the meantime, start without. Uh, Miss X, and do you have a copy of this from the uh, Novus? Novus? You have it I from no so I'd ask you to pull it up from Novus. The important people, not I assume uh, the people at home on ACMI are able to see this through ACMI. So, Mr. Mason, it won't work. Oh, okay. You can go ahead. I'll go ahead. I'll, we'll look at this and work on it. It was experiment anyway. Um, you'll. I did include the regular memo, and I want to apologize for having a delayed uh, uh, send out of that document uh, beyond the school committee's uh, expected uh, time frame to receive documents. Uh, we were waiting for some numbers to s settle in in the, in the financial system, and as always, I thought it would be better to give you the most recent data um, versus giving you a month end data um, that I normally give you for, would have been for period eight, which would have been the end of February. So you got 10 more days of additional data. So all of the, the, the data that was in the, uh, the financial reports and that's displayed also on the slide deck, same information, um, is as of March 10th. It includes the general fund, the, which is the town appropriation, the, the chapter 70 state aid and local comp contribution, revolving and special revenue, select ones that we include in our normal proposed budgets, and grants, that which include the normal entitlement grants that run for most of our operation budget, other grants that we've been awarded for this year as well, except for um, uh, AEF grants, COVID-19 uh, grants, and the electric bus grant that we're still working on. So the general fund, our total revised budget was 80, about $80.1 million, and as of today, the total expended is about $46.5 million. Total encumbered is around $31.374 million with uh, projected expenditure, which is, consists of some known expenses as well as a, a projected, a formula that projects department spending their budgets down to zero, which uh, department budgets are around $1.4 million as of um, March 10th, uh, with a projected remaining balance of $600 in $18,902, um, which uh, with the administration would eventually recommend if this ba balance was to hold true uh, for the school committee to vote in the future uh, to use that balance to prepay fiscal 23 out of district tuition since that's one of the driving factors of the, the excess uh, dollars. Um, so. Other driving factors of that is also we had vacant uh, positions in the start of the year and still currently uh, that were that have been hard to fill, um, and so those salary savings are still in the budget. Also, negative driving factors as we've been you'll see in the report is higher um, over budget costs for ventilation services uh, to fix equipment that happened throughout the year um, and the supplies that like the MERV 13 filters. And it looks like you're about to see it on Zoom, so that'll be good. Um, and as well as there are some projected expenditures. Uh, we, as everybody, I mean, many of you may know, the Bracket School Playground. Uh, yeah, let me forward it, sorry. Can we put it in the presentation mode on, the, on PowerPoint? Okay. Sorry. Go to slideshow. And <clears throat> uh, we killed something. Slideshow. 
for our part. There it is. You're in for us. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We got to figure this out, but we'll figure it out. We're in learning sure. mode, so we're, th yes. we're there. So currently on the general fund, also in the projected expenditures, is repairs for the uh, for the uh, bracket playground repairs. Uh, so currently the bracket playground is not accessible. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what's happening on that screen. But um, it's not accessible, but we are expecting the $85,000 to cover those repairs to temporarily get us to, to the point where the capital funding for the design of the project, which is expected, I believe, in fiscal 24, and the rollout will try to push it out for fiscal 24 of the total project budget of 800,000. So it would be 880,000 for the total budget that we're expecting in capital. Um, also is air conditioning for Fusco House here on the lower levels for the, the classrooms, uh, which is about $25,000. We are also looking at investing in uh, UV light for bus disinfection, um, as well as uh, expected closing costs that we're anticipating, which is around 90,000 and uh, out of district uh, tuition uh, transfer um, or offset, which is gonna go to the circuit breaker revolving fund, which you'll see an offset later on in a different, different part of the report. All right, let's, let's pause for a moment to get the tech right. We have a short meeting. We have a yeah. short okay. meeting tonight that we can practice. Okay, with the chair. Why, why don't we just wait a minute to get this straight out, I agree. He switched with you. out of the Zoom, mm -hmm. Sean. He switched out of the Zoom on that, on that computer. So the Zoom is still seeing the stick in the computer. There you go. There we go. Great. Thank you. Sean, stay there for just a second because when he goes to the next slide, we want to make sure it goes together. It will go together. They're just seeing my notes that might pop yeah. up. So um, there is a way to flip this, but is, there's some options up there. There's three buttons. What do the three buttons say? Then display or show. Display settings. I just want to see if you can flip what they're seeing. All right. Display settings. Yeah. There you go. Swap presenter and slideshow. There, huh? there we go. You got That's one great. Of the women. You got one or the other. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I want them to see that, though. Okay. I don't want them to see that. I mean, I, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Okay. No you, problem. Everyone hopefully in here can uh, see via Novus. We'll, we'll work on this. We got everything. No, there, there it goes. goes. There you are. All right. You're fine. Yeah, that's great. It's great? Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Sean. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, yes. Sean. All right. So um, special revenue and revolving. Um, so this is a, the, the high-level totals, total uh, view of the selected special revenue revolving that's normally reported. And we had a starting balance going into fiscal 22, around 3.8, $3.9 million. Currently our total revenue collected is around $2 million. And we're uh, projecting to collect another 1.8 million uh, in revenue. Our expenses were totally at, um, as of March 10th was around $2.7 million amongst all funds. So these funds, I wanna make sure that we understand is this would include like circuit breaker, building rentals, um, uh, monotony preschool, and, and, those, and those specific, and other select uh, groups. But those are the main drivings in foreign exchange tuition. Um, also totally encumbered is almost $200,000 of encumbrances. Um, and we're projecting uh, a remaining balance currently, but this number is not firm because there could be additional unknown expenditures and uh, maybe possible additional rentals from building rentals that might adjust this, but we're looking at around 4.6 million uh, remaining balance to carry into the next fiscal year. And on this, in, included in the, um, this projection is the following special projects or procurements, which is there's a need to purchase a, a special education 7D vehicle. Um, f we bought a 2015 Ford Explorer Typically, we have a, we try to keep those vehicles for around 10 years, and because um, they're low mileage. Um, however, there's an exhaust manifold that has uh, that is 
as that is broken on that that particular device i mean a particular uh vehicle and uh to replace it after ford is ford mechanics uh certified mechanic and another vendor dudley looked at it uh, if we do replace it there's a possibility of, of breaking the stud which can then eventually lead to the, the actual engine needing to be replaced uh they, we believe that this vehicle uh will continue to get worse and not pass inspection and leave us with a dead vehicle that we can't use and it was not included in the capital plan and it wasn't expected um so we're looking to use that out of building uh, out of the transportation uh revolving also uh at the bishop the fire alarm control panel um there's been you know some issues a few issues with that where we had had a fire department go on uh, a fire watch um this was an unexpected we believe it was due to a surge in that area and the system that's in there is proprietary and is over 20 years old uh we deem that this is necessary and we need it for their safety to protect that building when it's not occupied um last year we had also this funding for uh Dallin school rooftop units um last year there was a major leak in the library we did do major uh, some repairs and and put new furniture and equipment in the library however uh, the 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 fix to that was expected to be a long lasting fix however we're now seeing there's more issues coming to it uh, coming of it and is recommended by the deputy town manager um who's the interim dire uh, facilities director that we move forward with purchasing uh or replacing a rooftop unit replacement um it was initially budgeted for half the amount due to the current times and supply chain is, chain issues it's actually twice that amount at 245,000 he's also recommending that we consider doing an ad alternate uh for the gymnasium uh air conditioning um that's included in this projection as well as uh ventilation equipment replacement around $50,000 it happened in the Pierce computer lab which is an old system that uh needs to be replaced and recommended by the facilities department and lastly we're looking at summer projects for flooring projects to replace tiles throughout the district uh to prevent tripping hazards and whatnot and also do our annual painting which is included in this projection and last but not least our grants are we've been award, total awarded uh for all the grants you got you see in this report is about 5.4 million dollars currently expended is about 1.1 and we're expecting through encumbrances about 1.5 and another another million dollars from projected expenditures um currently what I see is that the COVID the there are COVID related funds mainly SR2 SR3 and additional special education uh grants through ARPA that may have a remaining balance not sure how it would spend down but we can carry those over until fiscal 24 so uh that will be helpful for the future year budgets and that's it for the monthly reports any members have any questions for Mr. Mason at this time? Ms. Morgan. Um, the increase in utilities is going to go into the base budget next year, right? Like we're not planning on paying our utility bills out of revolving accounts moving forward. So it's a combination of we increased the base budget in the general fund and we increased it on the revolving fund okay. um, based on estimates that we received from um the architects of the new high school building um we just are receiving our first bills and we're trying to still assess how that's going to work and play out according to their their projections do we always pay for utilities out of revolving funds so in the past we have paid when we've gone over because it was underfunded um we've done a lot of energy efficiency projects to bring to try to bring spending down but the installation of new equipment um throughout the district also drives more usage of of like of electricity so once again um it's going to be hard to say how this is going to impact us until we see really how obviously weather is also part of that factor but the new the new wing is right now currently all electric so the problem for this year which wasn't i don't think 100% factored in this budget was that we're still paying gas for a building that's not occupied and we're st and and utilities for that building until it's offline and destroyed it hasn't that those those uh particular accounts haven't gone over to the the contractor and so um within also acquiring the new building 
So hopefully by, by the summertime, this will level off and when we'll see the other building completely offline. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cardin. Uh, so the rooftop units, typically the other ones are in the capital plan. This is just sort of a special one because it was unexpected, mm -hmm. right? This, was, this wasn't expected. Dallum was later on in the capital plan. That was proposed by the previous uh, facilities director, Greg Walters. Um, and so I think what, and me and Jim have spoke, uh, Jim Feeney, the deputy town manager, we've spoken about this is that in the future, we're probably gonna have to look at doing more generic requests in the capital plan, because due to, if you are too specific, um, some of these requests are bonded, and then they have to be used for that specific location. And so we're looking at maybe making a general request going forward, saying like HVAC uh, unit replacements in general, so that if a school pops up and we have to switch or alt, like change our plan, then we'll have the funds available. Great, thanks. Anyone else at this time? Thank you, Mr. Mason. We uh, next item is uh, super, uh, APS Arlington Public Schools calendar, revisions for approval. Dr. Holman. Thank you. Um, we did not intend to do a third read uh, of this, but we did have to change a couple of things and I wanted to make sure that the committee was aware. We adjusted phone numbers um, and it's actually, um, Ms. Diggins had gone through and double checked all of the phone numbers. And so these are the appropriate ones to reach each school main number. Um, there was some confusion because we had done a phone system switch last year about which numbers were the best ones that would make sure that people got straight to a person. <clears throat> we also made a little bit of clarification around some of the icons like the um, A number 12 p.m. Um, early release indicator, which takes place on, hold on, I have to find it. Um, I think it's the day before Thanksgiving. Um, because we it, that wasn't clear to a few people who had seen the calendar and then we also were put some clarity around the kindergarten last day based on feedback we got on this year's calendar making sure that people understand that the kindergartners last day will not they won't come back for a half day after the two screening days their last day would be um the day before the two screening days and then they would have to the teachers would have the two screening days and then the day to work on placements um and so I just wanted to bring those last few changes to the committee for review and any other changes that you wanted us to make. And I apologize that the one that is in your um, uh, materials is not color or landscape. We can adjust that with the one that gets published on the site. Uh, questions? Ms. Uh, Morgan. Yeah, so Dr. Homan and Ms. Diggins, this could maybe be done. So the feedback that I've heard from, um, I think it's, I think three people asked about, they're confused about Gibbs slash Audison or Gibbs slash OMS and middle school. So the people who have fifth graders don't understand that their kids at Gibbs are in the middle school. Like they're like, it's, it's done in two different ways, right? So I don't know if you wanna have them be all middle school or all Gibbs slash OMS, but it seems like that's causing confusion for folks. Because um, it's middle high at 120, and then Gibbs yeah. Audison at 1145, and then middle school from six to eight, and that seems to be confusing. So that's my only feedback. I hadn't heard that one. We I know. Make that adjustment. <laughs> Is it okay if we make that adjustment and it doesn't come back to the committee? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like an administrative <laughs> change to me. Okay. We can do that. We all set with that. I'm going to move approval of this. Approve, uh, um, motion to approve with the administrative change. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing it all that. seem like administrative changes. Yeah, I mean, no, I think me. the motion is to yeah. adopt the calendar with the administrative change Fine. as described. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. yes. Ms. Extant. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Uh, one more note on the calendar. Um, we will, the uh, K screening days will move back with the snow days and we will get that calendar revised and sent out to families um, after April 1st, once we're pretty confident that there won't be any more snow days. That's for this year's calendar. 
hopefully nothing after April 1st. Superintendent's report, Dr. Holman. Um, can I ask Ms. Diggins to stop sharing and I will share from Zoom? Yeah. Or oh, this works sort of. Um, Ms. Diggins, I can. I think I can just share from Zoom and they'll be able to see it and so will the people at home. Yeah, do that. Yeah, do that. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. No, well, I have no problem with it if it works. Stop sharing the screen. I think this will do it. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, so first an update um, with regards to COVID cases. We are seeing things um, more or less level off in Arlington. So there was a slight raise in cases um, per 100K in Arlington last week and this week, um, but not as much of a bump up in Arlington this week as last week. We have had an increase in cases in our schools, but that's been primarily focused at the Bishop. So as some members of the community know, and as members of the committee are aware, um, at Bishop this week, we had a sharp um, increase in cases towards the beginning of the week. And this began with a couple of cases that were in a single classroom, um, as well as some isolated cases in other classrooms. We decided to monitor the situation carefully and put masks on only in those classrooms. So we began with some very localized um, response and then we uh, proceeded by increasing cohorting in those classrooms and continuing to monitor the situation. We did our um, pool testing at Bishop on the first and the second day of the week and when uh, we got through the second day of the week we had far more cases and we were finding follow-up cases in some of those classrooms where there were multiple cases and so in response to that that sort of fits the definition of an outbreak that we discussed at our last meeting. So we made a decision in partnership with the Department of Health, um, with our nursing team and staff, um, and with the Bishop principal to require masks through at least Wednesday of next week, at which point we will revisit it. At this point in Bishop, uh, cases have slowed down on coming in, but we did get up to 14 um, as of to earlier this morning. And so we just wanna watch those cases come down because that's a large concentration of cases in a single school, given that we are not seeing the same thing in all of our other schools. I've heard from a few concerned family members about the fact that we needed to reinstitute some masking requirements um, and have done my best to respond and answer questions about why we went, made this decision and the fact that we're really trying to do as localized of a response as possible. If we see spread or an outbreak um, and not do widespread requirements if we don't have to. Uh, but it is important that the community understand that we, um, we're, our goal remains to keep kids in school. And so what that means when you have to isolate for five or more days, if you end up testing positive for COVID, is that getting a lot of students getting COVID means that a lot of students will be out of school. And it could mean that staff would be out of school. And we don't want that because we want to be able to adequately staff our schools and we want to be able to keep students in school as much as possible. So we will need to return to some mitigation measures. Uh, we will do so as fluidly as we can and as flexibly as we can and do our best not to impose measures that we don't need or don't think are absolutely necessary. So that's an update on cases for this week. It would be much lower this week if it weren't for the little outbreak um, at, uh, at Bishop. A few additional updates for the committee. Um, we had, hold on. Uh, we have now uh, been starting to move forward with strategic planning. Um, we are getting ready to send out an invitation for stakeholders to participate, and we're working on getting a facilitator for this spring's work. It looks like we'll be doing some work over April, May, and June to articulate a vision uh, based in our values, uh, mission statement, and some strategic priorities that we can use to develop a strategic plan with uh, metrics and goalposts and outcomes, um, as well as strategic initiatives as we move into the fall. We are also getting started with our equity audit in partnership with Longview. Um, we sent out an invitation last week to members of the community and have been answering questions and getting participants um, into the equity audit team. One of the things we really like about the partner that we have selected is that they engage a team of stakeholders in actually doing the audit itself and going through the materials and learning about the school system um, and then they write up ultimately the report, but it's a participatory process uh, that our a group that participates in the equity audit gets to learn from and learn through. And we will certainly be paying those staff who agree to participate in the equity audit. 
I have the um, joy of reporting to you that the girls hockey team is headed to the division one state championship this Sunday at 545 at Boston Garden. This is the first time in school history that they've gone to the state championship. Um, their record for this year so far is 22 to one to one and this is their fourth straight Middlesex League championship. And we have a lot of other sports news too. So we had 367 students participating um, this winter in athletic programs. Uh, the boys hockey team had a spectacular state tournament run too, and um, they lost in uh, multiple overtime, double overtime, but the game uh, was really quite spectacular because they came back um, from being down 4-1 with four minutes left in the game. So really proud of the, the boys. They did a great job. Um, and you know they did they did uh, win the division, so that was fantastic. Wrestling won their third straight Middlesex League championship. Uh, boys and girls basketball and gymnastics all improved from the beginning of the season to the end. Track and swimming had a number of students qualify for sectional and state MIAA meets. Skiing finished its second season season as an official MIAA sport, um, and the staff and student athletes did a great job growing the program this year. And um, spring sports start on Monday, March 21st. As of today, there are 432 students registered to compete, which is very exciting. Um, and in other news, six National History Day students at OMS and Gibbs, and that's what the picture is there. I went to go visit them the other day and hear about their amazing projects. They're brilliant. We have six student projects going to the state competition um, on everything from diplomacy during the Cold War uh, to misinformation in the Salem Witch Trials. They did documentaries and websites and papers. And um, it's really was very exciting to hear about the research they've done and the revision that they plan to do from the feedback from the judges um, at regionals before they go to the state championship. So good for them. Um, as you've heard from some members of the community, and as you know, there's a heterogeneous uh, grouping proposal for ninth grade English that we're looking forward to getting feedback from the community on and talking more about and answering questions about in the coming weeks. There will be forums on Tuesday, March 22nd and Monday, March 28th. These are limited to 50 spaces and they'll be in the AHS discourse lab. Um, this is meant as an opportunity for us to have discussion um, for members of the study group to answer questions about the initiative and about some of the conversations that they've been having over the last several weeks. We also intend um, to have an online forum for anyone who can attend, no limits on participation for this one on Tuesday, April 6th from 6.15 to 7.30. Um, I, we have sent the information about this out to Audison and AHS parents, and it will also be included in a notice that will go out in my update um, to families, hopefully tomorrow, if not early next week. And finally, in your packet for this week uh, are the enrollment reports, both the projected report for next year, um, which I adjusted slightly to include only those uh, enrollments that have been finalized and approved by registration, not all of the ones that are pending as well, because sometimes those don't turn into real enrollments. Um, but those are reflective of the buffer zone assignments round one that was completed on Friday, March 4th. Um, and also this year's enrollments which haven't changed substantially from your last report. I'll take any questions. Any questions for the Dr. Holman at this time? Thank you, Dr. Holman. Thank uh, you. Let's see. Uh, the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Warrant number 22197 in the amount of $577,347.44. Regular school committee minutes, uh, March 3rd, 2022. Your motion to approve. Move approval. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Uh, Ms. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Exton? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Subcommittee liaison reports. Uh, is there someone from the Budget Committee that wishes to speak to this? Dr. Ampey is not here tonight. No? Okay. Community relations. Ms. Exton? Nothing to report. Curriculum instruction, assessment, and accountability. Mr. Cardin? Uh, yes, we have a meeting uh, scheduled for Tuesday, March 29th at 4 p.m. 
to uh, go over the uh, or just have ask have a chance to ask questions and go over the heterogeneous grouping initiative proposal for ELA ninth grade um, and other items that may come up between now and then. Thank you. Is that a Zoom? Is that Zoom or in person? Uh, not sure yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's that? Facilities, Mr. Thielman. We meet by Zoom on Monday the 21st at 4 o'clock to talk about playgrounds. And, and there's other items on the agenda too, but mostly playgrounds. Thank you. Policy and procedure, Mr. Schlickman. We will be meeting tomorrow on Zoom at 10.30 a.m. Our agenda includes three technical corrections uh, to agenda formatting uh, and also uh, correction to the member compensation uh, policy as that will change July 1. Uh, we have four policies recommended by MASC for revision based on changes in state law and regulation. Um, we're going to be discussing uh, special dedications of school facilities with an eye towards how we will be naming spaces in the new high school. And we are going to be looking at EBC Supplemental, which is our emergency policy pertaining to COVID. Uh, most of the elements of that will be going away and possibly some of the elements will be brought into our regular policy manual. Hopefully we'll be able to do that all within the hour. We have a lot at 1030 tomorrow morning on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Arlington High School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman. Uh, we don't meet until April 5th, I guess, Monday, April 5th. Uh, so the building's open. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. And we all got to walk through it last week, a couple weeks ago. Great job. Any liaison reports at this time? Announcements by any of the members or any administration? Future agenda items? Okay. Uh, the school committee... Uh, in a minute, we'll take a, a vote to enter executive session. We will be not be, be returning to regular meeting afterwards. Executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union, which if held in an open meeting may be, have a detrimental effect. To conduct strategies with regard to collective bargaining or litigation, and which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. Um, I'll entertain a motion for executive session at this time. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Schlickman? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Sexton? Yes. Thumbs thank you. Uh, and I vote yes. It's unanimous.